Hello, Internet. Wow, that was bad. I did all that with no sound. So, uh, to make a long story short, I'm going to cut that intro part out. Uh, we're building Captain Jack Sparrow, and it builds character tonight. Uh, Captain Jack is a human pirate, so he's a human. He's got the pirate background, and he's a rogue. We haven't done a whole lot at this point. We've done his base stats, gave him his variant human feet, and... Uh, started going through his rogue abilities so his roguish archetype is a swashbuckler so we're gonna go to the sword coast adventure guide to grab swashbuckler from that um, so he gets fancy footwork uh, fancy footwork you attack a creature. Uh, the melee attack. The melee attack. You do uh, not provoke attacks of opportunity again uh, from them for this turn. Then we're going to have, what is it, Rackish Audacity, I think they call it now. Yep, Rackish Audacity. Okay. That's going to give us Charisma to Initiative Rolls. So... Uh, let's try to Initiative. Uh, you... Are eligible for sneak attack when there is only one enemy, no, uh, within five feet. So basically, reverse sneak attack. Uh, for his ability score improvement at level 4, we're going to put his dexterity to 18. It's going to go up to a 4. Uh, then, 5 we get Uncanny Dodge. Feet. Uncanny Dodge. Reaction to have the damage from, I believe it's just a melee attack. Could be wrong though. Alright, uh, with an attack. Um, okay. I have the damage from an attack. From an attack. At. F that was five. Six, we're gonna get two more expertise. So we're probably gonna choose. Oh, we didn't. You know what? Let's choose his background. Because we gotta figure out what those skills are. Background is sailor, with the variant for pirate. So that's actually athletics. And perception, so we can get one other one that we choose. You know what? He was able to survive on that island all by himself. For a little while, anyway, so we'll give him survival. So he's gonna get expertise in two more. Uh, I think we'll give it to him in. Acrobatics and uh, acrobatics. Yeah, I'm gonna give it to him a performance. I think that makes the most sense. Um. So let us. Sorry, Pat won't stop messaging me during the course of the stream. So we're gonna keep moving on though. So we have this background. It says navigators, tools, and vehicles, water. Which also fits his character very well. Navigators tools. Vehicles. Water. Um, let's see. What other things does he get? Let's check back up to Rogue. OK. 
Okay, uh, we got the expertise. We've got evasion, half damage on failed deck saves, no damage on success. Jump down here. And then evasion after evasion, he's going to get an ability score improvement. We're going to just max out his dexterity. And then after that, we get another roguish archetype feature, which is panache for the swashbuckler. Which also fits his character pretty well in my mind. Um... As an action, make a persuasion check. Um, action, make a persuasion. Persuasion check versus enemy insight. And then it is, uh, I'll put the qualifier. Plus to share language. And then if you succeed, it's hostile, it's disadvantage. Okay. Uh, if you succeed and it's hostile, it has disadvantage on attack rolls against is it against you or anyone but you? Against targets other than you. Against targets other than you. Um. For one minute until uh, or until so you're an ally damage it or just attack it? Oh. Till you or an ally attacks it or targets it with a spell. Affects it with a spell. Attacks it, affects it with a spell. Or it moves more than 60. If not hostile, it is charmed for one minute, and I think it says it considers you to be uh, considers you a friendly equation, acquaintance rather, and considers you a friendly acquaintance. That was, our, I think, our level 9 ability. Level 10, we get another ability score improvement. We're going to go ahead and bump up Captain Jack's Charisma. Ah, uh, that was a 10. We're going to get Reliable Talent, which makes a lot of sense of how he does most of the things and survives. Reliable Talent, any uh, roll of 10 or less on a skill check. On an ability check that you add your proficiency bonus to is counted as a 10. Uh, and then lastly, his final ability score improvement, where one once again you're going to put that in charisma. So this is now a 4. His initiative is a nine because it's charisma plus dexterity. Strength is minus one. Dex is nine. Con is two. This is a four. Wisdom is a, this is a one. One and charisma is a four. We gave him expertise in acrobatics. So that's eight, 13. One, zero, three. Uh, we gave him expertise in deception as well, so those are 12. 
one, I'm sorry, zero, one, four, zero, one, zero, perception, he's not expert in, so that's a five, performance, we said he was, so that's another 12, four, uh, yeah, you're right. It, it's true, but he's definitely not physically strong. Um, Zelda, to your point. Yeah, he's not... He's... You're right. He's a... I guess we could consider him a bumbling idiot archetype, if you will. Like, the lovable idiot. And that he is clumsy. Or, is it all an act? Because, like, you could almost argue drunken master kind of situation. Because he's got the you know, thing going on, but, uh, like, it works for him, so, I don't know, and, like, he's clearly charismatic, because people listen to him, like, he has people that are loyal to him, you know, so he's gotta at least be somewhat good at, at charisma, um, let's see, uh, 13... That's true. You're right. That's that's that is an expertise in deception, right there, tricking natives into believing he's a god with some face paint. Uh, let's see. So we don't get our thirteenth level ability, although the, again, uh, advantage giving being able to give yourself advantage on acrobatics or athletics checks is the thing that I feel like he would be able to do, because he does a lot of weird, goofy... Especially, like, the second movie and beyond, there's a lot... It's a lot less, I feel like, realistic. Uh, the first... I mean, granted, it's a movie with zombie pirates, but I feel like the first one was somewhat grounded in realism, and then as the movies go on, they just get more and more ostentatious with, like, the giant spinning wheel that they're all running inside, and they're like, whoa, on the tree branches and in the nets and stuff, and it just gets kind of a little goofy... So, uh, that's where I feel like the acrobatics comes into play. Um. Yeah. Alright, well, I mean, that's why I, that's like I said, this is my thought process of not canceling the stream. Because it's so short. Like, he doesn't, so we could do his rapier here. This is a 9. It says 1d8 plus 5. Uh, if we go with Matt Mercer pistol rules, this is also a 9. And this is 1d10. 1d10. Plus 5. Uh, he's got sneak attack. Um, oh, we can put it in his thieves tools. He's not an expert in. We just consider that a 9, as we saw, because he could not escape from a prison cell until someone told him how to do it. We call this a 4. And we'll call this, I don't know, a three? Ah, uh, maybe. Maybe there's a, we'll call it a nine for dexterity. There really isn't anything to similar to that. The closest thing to the pirate's curse is, uh, would be like lycanthropy. Um, I mean, you could argue that well, again, this is the other part is that we never really discussed which Captain Jack Sparrow we were doing. You know, like, if you go anything but the... Like, even in the beginning of the first movie, he's not cursed. He takes on the curse at one point in the movie, but then he also resolves himself of the curse by the end of the movie. Um, it would be a cool concept. Basically, during the moonlight, you take on the properties of being an undead, which unfortunately... There is no templates in 5e like there was in previous editions where like if you want to go, oh like your creature is a celestial apply the celestial template to it oh your creature is an undead apply the undead template to it i think the only thing we know about undead is they don't require food water sleep or breathe the ability to breathe like that's the one thing defined in the monster manual as like the undead trait is like that's what they get and then everything else is specific to the, uh, you know, specific to the, uh, 
individual monster. Like, let's see if we pull up in the monster manual. And we go... Well, let's go to a skeleton. undead nature a skeleton doesn't require air food drink or sleep that's like the only real quantifier of like what is something that all undead have i mean you could argue like an undead has immunity to poison exhaustion the poison condition and vulnerability to bludgeoning damage you could argue i guess theoretically that he has that uh like he would have those traits during the curse his AC is a 17. And then let's figure out his hit points here. Uh, 11 times 7. 77. Oh, plus 10. That was easy. 87. Um... Yeah, unfortunately, I mean, like, you could argue again also that, like, the coin that he wears... I believe was also a like an artifact um, uh, he's just a swashbuckling rogue high patroller um, I don't really see the need to give him he's not very fighty he's more sneaky and stumbly as it were um, but yeah I uh, I don't like I said he doesn't really have magic stuff you can argue that the coin but the, I, i'll be honest everything past the yeah his ninth piece of eight yeah i don't know. i mean to be honest with you after the first movie they all sort of blend together and just like a nothing that interesting to me like they didn't really do it for me like i stuck with them for a while because like the kraken was kind of cool but uh i feel like if you guys ever watched Ask a Ninja uh, way back in the day, uh, or even, you know, if you've watched it at all, if you watch Ask a Ninja on Pirates of the Caribbean 2, that's a pretty good... That, like, sums up my feelings about... Uh, that sums up my feelings about the remaining Pirates of the Caribbean movies. Yeah, I mean, he does have a magic compass. That, I mean, he loses the compass. It wouldn't be that far. I mean, Ma Mask of Ninja was, was popular circa 2006, I want to say. Uh, but he came back and forth, and he was popular, and then he left. He wrote a book, then he came back to YouTube, and he was doing videos, like, all the time, and then he just kind of disappeared again. Uh, but you can look at YouTube.com slash Ask a Ninja uh, and look up, well, most of the Ask a Ninja videos, I, except for, like, the first one. I find them all very funny, but the... Uh, What's called the uh, the Pirates of the Caribbean ones are pretty good. Um, I don't know, man. Like I said, those movies just really blur together on me. Uh, you know, I mean, I I will confess that up and like I haven't had to do research for these characters yet because I know every character that I've built so far, I know enough about them. To be able to build them without having to re you know, watch and or read the source material. That's going to end very shortly. I think the next couple weeks I have characters that I literally know nothing about. So I have to learn who they are so I can accurately build them. Um, I mean, we can give them the compass. Sure. We can give them the map. Why not? We'll just put it on here. Magic compass leads you to... Uh, your heart's greatest desire. I wouldn't consider it really to be attunement, because people could pick it up and just use it immediately. So, you know. Like I said, I really don't feel like there's much left to talk about. Uh, we gave him the lucky feat to explain a lot of the shenanigans that he gets into and out of, survive and, you know, manages to survive. Oh, we should get the, uh, plus two decks. Plus two decks, plus two, plus 
which is ability scores. Uh, I mean, his stats are, I feel like, reasonable. He's got a decent amount of skills, as he is a rogue. Uh, his passive perception is a 15. Um, you know, he's got expertise in sleight of hand, deception, acrobatics, and performance. All things I feel like he does very well. Um, he's got a rapier, which I'm just, as a cutlass, I'm just flavoring as a status. The same status as a rapier. You could argue that it's a short sword. The way they fight is kind of fancy though, so I'm going to call it a, uh, the, it uses the stats of a rapier. So it does a d8 plus 5, he's got a pistol, does a d10 plus 5, 66 sneak attack damage. He is a swashbuckler, so he has uh, fancy footwork, so if he attacks people he can run away from them for free, which ex also is a thing that he does relatively often. He adds his charisma to initiative, which also explains how he manages to get up and run away faster than anybody else can catch him with his plus 9 to initiative. Um, he's able to get sneak attack damage when he fights, uh, one-on-one -on -one with an enemy, as a true swashbuckler does. He has uncanny dodge to reduce the damage, evasion to further do that with dexterity-based things. He has the panache, uh, panache or panache ability, depending on how you pronounce it. Um, he can make a persuasion check against an enemy insight check. If they're hostile, they have disadvantage on attacks against creatures other than him, as he's their target. If they're not hostile, it charms them, and then they treat him as a friend. And he has reliable talent, so any of these skills you see here with a little dot next to it that he is proficient in, uh, when he, if he rolls to make one of those skill checks and rolls less than a 10, he treats that roll as a 10. Uh, and he has the magic compass that leads him to his heart's greatest uh, desire. We give him studded leather armor to represent his pirate's coat. Um, I can't really think of anything else to add to him that, like... Like, before we kind of get into the trap we often fall into with it builds character, where we just start trying to give, uh, you know, we just start trying to give these people magic items, just because we're like, oh, they're, the, he should have this, and he should have that. Like, oh, maybe his sword's a plus one sword, but we have nothing to think that, you know what I mean? I feel like this is pretty much Captain Jack Sparrow in a nutshell. I, you know, like I said, I was planning on canceling the stream just because we didn't have enough time, uh to originally do it because I was so late to the show, um, just having a babysit and things like that till my wife got home. But uh, we managed to, I, I decided to do the stream anyway because Captain Jack Sparrow was gonna be a relatively short video. Um, yeah, like I said, that's where we get into the boots of striding and spring. Like there's a lot of things you could do, but you're just sort of putting magic items on a non-magical character for the sake of giving them magic items. I mean, you know, we could argue that his hat is a hat of something, you know. It's a plus one hat of protection, and it gives him a plus one to AC and saving throws, you know. We could give him a luck stone, because he's lucky, you know. I, I mean, we could say that his, you know, he's got racers of defense, and he doesn't really wear armor, and we just get rid of the studded leather armor, you know. It, it just gets, it's... <sighs> It all comes down to a matter of opinion with these characters the further we build into them. This one was relatively straightforward. Uh, this is no Darth Vader's power, you know, supply that's keeping him alive or building the Iron Man armor. Those, there's a lot of leeway, and I'm willing to take a lot of, you know, exceptions from you guys as to, like, oh, you know what, you're right. It's probably not wings of flying, it's boots of flying. Uh, things of that nature, but I mean, Captain Jack is pretty straightforward in my mind. Um, let's, uh, let's see. Let's see what we have on the docket for next week. I have to post in the Iron Man video is out. It was a little late getting it out there. Um, I have to post that in here. Okay. So next week is Ichigo from Bleach. I've, I'll full stop. I've watched one episode of Bleach ever. So I'm going to have to watch some Bleach in the next couple days so I know enough about him. Or rely heavily on you folks in the chat to tell me how to build him. I know he's got, I know he's like, it captures demons and he's got a sword. That's about my extent of my knowledge of Bleach. So, that was in a time period, Bleach was popular in a time period where my interest in anime was waning at the moment in college where I was more focused on other things so I just didn't really get into it when a lot of other people were yeah I mean you guys tell me 
uh, what I should watch if you're bleach watchers and I'll know what to watch like a lot of these like I said some of these I'm very familiar with others not so much um, but you know yeah like I said I'm not really worried about most of these uh, knobby knobs and Ezekiel stone I'm not really familiar with uh, Berserk, you know, Guts from Berserk, I'm not really familiar with. Uh, I mean, I'm familiar with Castile from Supernatural, but I stopped after Season 4 or 5. So I can build him at that point. I don't know. He's got... I mean, everybody dies in that show and comes back. I can't keep it straight. Um, and the rest I'm not worried about. So, um... Yeah, I mean, you guys are Bleach Watchers. You tell me or you want to binge it and then fill me in on what I should know. Uh, I will. Like I said, I'll take some time in the next couple days to catch a couple episodes. We do have the, uh, but we are gonna probably bring this stream to a close. Um, but, uh, uh, you guys, I mean, honestly, I think Supernatural just died after season two. Uh, I think the show just went downhill after that point, to be honest. But that's another story. Uh, so we're gonna bring this stream pretty much to an end, guys. It was a short stream. Um, but I did want to call, again, throw out a couple of announcements. I will do more formal things on this. I just haven't had the time because I've been going through all the interview content from Hascon. Uh, one, we do have a Wormwood Gaming code. So if you go to wormwoodgaming.com slash nerd immersion, you can get free shipping, uh, free domestic shipping on your orders from Wormwood Gaming. Uh, so... Uh, that's a thing. And then, uh, I also have this coming Saturday at 10 a.m. Uh, we have a 24-hour charity live stream. We did one last year online, uh, which was a big success. We blew past our goal by, you know, 10 plus times. Everybody had a good time. People still talk about that game. This is going to be a little bit different. This 24-hour stream is going to be an in-person stream at the table behind me here. Me, Jake, Sean, and Pat are going to be playing through Tomb of Annihilation. I will be DMing. They will be playing. We will be trying to get through as much of Tomb of Annihilation as possible in 24 straight hours. However, the, uh, the donation stuff hasn't been set up as this is for a charity stream. I think we're allowing a lot more craziness to be added to the game. Uh, like donating to add decks of many things and things of and wishes and things of that nature are all things that will be added but it is all charity to help sick kids so the prices may be a little higher but you're doing a good cause and helping to alter the game as we go so you get to do a little bit of both um, so that will be this coming Saturday at 10 a.m. Eastern to 10 a.m. Eastern on Sunday you can watch us slowly slowly become beaten down and broken as time goes on um so the, there will be links and stuff set up to go to our extra life page to make sure that you guys donate to extra life and not just to us directly as much as i do appreciate donations to us these donations are designed to go to extra life um so that's something uh and then <laughs> We also have, we also will be doing a 24-hour online stream as a continuation of the game from last year. That won't be happening till November 4th. I actually haven't touched base with anybody, but uh, this one will be online and we'll be having different folks cycle in every three to four hours. Uh, so that'll be fun. So be on the lookout for that. And who knows, some of you guys that come out and check out the videos and comment and watch us live all the time, you may be tapped to jump into a three-hour session uh, and be one of our players. So we'll see. Anyway, guys, hope you enjoyed this shorter episode of It Builds Character. Um, I'll be back next week. We'll be back in full form. Uh, well, guys, the best way to hit me up is either via Twitter direct message or join our discord server and message me there um it gets a little crazy those 24 hour streams i also get obviously progressively crazier as i'm dming for 24 hours straight uh last year we did have two people that basically stuck with me for the full 24 um i don't think we're gonna try to do that this time i think what we're gonna try to do is 
get more people in here because at the very least it helps keep me invigorated in that more new people are joining it gives me fresh faces people that haven't been that are also just as tired as i am you know new people come in it rejuvenates the group everything's going um and we'll continue that actually is the 24 hour stream is available to watch um the 24 hour stream from last year is available to watch on our youtube there's a youtube playlist for it and it is i believe also available here on twitch to watch as well um but the problem being we did my computer decided to like shut down and do a mandatory windows update at around 2 a.m so it shut down for about the stream shut down for more or less two hours two to three hours so if you look and see like oh why is it only 21 hours not 24 it's because we lost a chunk of time as my computer was updating well like i was literally sitting here in my chair trying to stay awake watching a little reticle spin as it was updating so that i could jump back in and we could go that game was crazy they fought dragons they had somebody donated to add a druid who was a dragon to the game somebody's soul got trapped in a gourd they fought a giant pumpkin king somebody got a squirtle as a companion they invented beer pong uh i mean it was all over the place so there's a lot of craziness that happens in those streams um but that's the nature of it it's it's designed to be kooky and fun because uh, when it's kooky and fun like that, the you know everybody has a good time and people want to donate to make things a little more wacky and all the money goes to help you know kids in need. Um, and like a lot of the folks, again, I'll start putting out videos and things about it as we get closer to the November date for that. But uh, a lot of people actually would put up their own extra life pages as part of my team. And, like, they'd let people donate to them. Like, you could donate to me to alter the game. You could donate to them to alter their characters. Like, you could pick their character's name, pick their character's background, and pick their character's whatever. And that was a cool thing that people did, too, just to help generate money. And we raised, we were planning to raise 100 bucks last year, and we raised over 1600 And we were the number three donator on the Wizards of the Coast team. Uh, the entirety of Wizards of the Coast. And number one was Dungeons & Dragons, like the Dungeons and Dragons team, like for everybody. So, um, so be on the lookout for that coming up. But again, if you guys want to come join the craziness, I may also set up that one Twitch donation app where you guys can buy us pizzas. Cause there's a thing where you can like look up our local food that delivers and buy us food. So we may have you, <laughs> we may throw that into the, the effect if people want to try and donate pizza to us while we're, we're streaming this weekend. Uh, We'll see, Hypertroller. People have characters. We're resuming the same five years later from the 24-hour stream from last year. So those characters will persist. Uh, but obviously new people will make new characters. I think we ended at around like level 10 or 12. So it'll be fun. Um, but yeah, you know, it was a good time. We Oh, someone became Batman. Uh, you know, we fought. they fought Clayface. I think either robin or starfire was there like it got a little wonky towards the end but that's what happens so uh anyway guys i've rambled on long enough about this so i'm gonna get off of here i gotta go put uh finish editing a interview with the folks at uh tales from candle keep i guess I'll, I'll give them a little plug here too um tales from candle keep tomb of annihilation is coming out this fall on steam you can actually go and wishlist them on steam at the moment um you can go to talesfromcandlekeep.com. They're giving away five Steam keys and five of the physical board games. Yes, 10 a.m. this Saturday. I believe there's actually a Twitch event uh, listed. I think I put that there. Um, let's see. Uh, but, yeah, we I did an interview with the folks from uh, BCOM Studios who built uh, Tales from Candlekeep Tomb of Annihilation. So I have a video, an interview of that going up. Also, I'll point this out, folks. Uh, the event section on Twitch exists. So you guys can see here. Uh, I put, like, you can see all the past events. Like, I put them in here so you guys can see, for the most part, when we're streaming. Um, so you can see right here, Tomb of Annihilation, Saturday, 10 a.m. 
I believe we also did just add, I did add a, um, a new panel that will automatically update it to your time zone right here. This should auto update to whatever your time zone is here, right? Just on the twitch.tv slash nerd immersion page. Um, so there you go. Um, yeah, and be sure to tune into it builds character next week. I would say we jump over the adventure maidens, but they're not recording tonight. Um, so we will be back on Saturday for the 24 hour stream. Uh, and then back Monday with more Horde of the Dragon Queen. Tuesday for Continuum number five. Wednesday for uh, me building Ichigo from Bleach. Uh, an It Builds character. And we're working to put together another stream. The Belladonnas and the uh, Horde of the Dragon Queen crew happens every other Monday. I'm in talks to put together another stream on the off Monday that they don't stream playing Princes of the Apocalypse. I've been working to put that together. I've already been in talks with some folks you may recognize from other D&D related Twitch streams and podcasts to try to get a group of uh, some more well-known folks together to play in a game that I'm running. So we shall see. Uh, that's a lot of rambling though. So just keep your eyes on uh, Twitch. Uh, keep your eyes on Twitter. Twitter is probably where I throw the most updates because it's the easiest to do. But I do talk in Discord as well, so be sure to check there. Um, but yeah. Anyway, guys, hope you enjoyed it. And I shall see you next time.